Next up in our Iron Man suit marathon is the Mark 43. The suit Tony wore primarily in Age of Ultron. So if you'd like, you could call this one of the Avengers Age of Ultron variants, but that's a mouthful. Honestly, the Mark designations for the suits in this game are pretty good compared to their alternative. If you don't know what I mean, look at it this way. All of the other core Avengers have one variant for the first Avengers film, and one for Age of Ultron. Some of the Avengers may have more than just those two, I'm looking at you Cap, but I mean that's the main idea. Some of the variants, especially for Captain America, can get tiresome in a way. Regular, Age of Ultron, no helmet, Age of Ultron, no helmet, blah blah blah. But with Iron Man, the mark numbers supersede the other designations the other Avengers have. It's a stupid thing to ramble about, sure, but I need to have something to talk about. And the Mark 43 suit design doesn't really differ much from the look of other standard suits. <laughs> So here's another Iron Man suit. Huh, I wonder what I can ramble about for this segment. Oh, Triangle Reactor. That's something different. This is the Mark VI, the one first seen in Iron Man 2, and the suit Tony wears when he initially goes up against Thor in the woods in the first Avengers movie. Aside from the Triangular Reactor, another thing to note about this suit is how Tony created a whole new element to power this suit of his. The old material he used prior to Iron Man 2, Palladium, was causing poisoning, which led Tony to making the element with the aid of his father's research. If you, if you saw Iron Man 2, you'd know this. If you haven't seen Iron Man 2, I don't blame you. You aren't missing much. In any case, I quite like the triangle shape to the reactor. It just looks more sleek than the standard circular reactor. While there's not much more to say, obviously the suit has all the same abilities as most suits. Flight, scan, repair, shield, laser, explosive, and technology, but really, I'm just repeating the abilities to buy some time. So here is the Mark 45 Iron Man suit. For those unaware, like myself before I googled it, this is the first suit that had Friday as the AI and not Jarvis. So Tony wore this suit in the Battle of Sokovia in Age of Ultron. Speaking of Friday, you never really see, or rather hear, much of her at all in the MCU. Everyone associates Jarvis as the official Iron Man AI despite what Ultron did to him. Like I like to think Jarvis was almost his own character in his appearances leading up to his quote unquote murder in Age of Ultron. I'll say the first time I saw Age of Ultron the death of Jarvis bugged me because as I said he seemed like an actual character despite being an AI. Also how can an AI die? I don't know it's weird. I, I guess I have to rewatch the movie. But luckily, the death of Jarvis eventually brought the birth of Vision in the same movie, played by the same guy. Good thing Paul Bettany looked enough like a passable Vision. What if Jarvis was played by a guy who looked nothing like Vision? I mean, yeah, Vision is an android, so it would be impossible to not look like Vision without the proper makeup, but you get it. I'm pretty sure killing off Jarvis and making the voice actor play Vision was not part of the plan for the MCU when the first Iron Man came out, but... You know, meh. This is a suit available in DLC, this time being the Captain America Civil War character pack. This is also the last Iron Man suit in this game chronologically, with Mark 46 being the highest mark in this game. Tony wore this for pretty much all of the Civil War film. Speaking of Civil War, something worth mentioning is the game Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. First of all, it's a great game, I totally recommend probably the best of the three Ultimate Alliance games, but that game also adapts the Civil War story from the comics, and a lot more faithfully too. The version of Civil War in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 was almost play by play from the comics, even with the same catalytic event with Nitro, the villain, blowing up an elementary school. In Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, you choose either the side of Captain America or Iron Man and play different missions based on your decision. I sided with Captain America in Ultimate Alliance 2 because I thought Cap had the better case. However, for the MCU, I feel like Tony was right. It's controversial, I know, but it seems like Steve's obsession with Bucky was the main reason for going against the Sokovia Accords and not like the actual morality of it. Plus, in the comics, the secret identities of heroes were at stake, but there's way fewer heroes in the MCU who still have their secret identities hidden. I think it's like what? Spider-Man? Yeah. Thank you. 
Here's yet another Iron Man suit only available in DLC. In this case, it's way more interesting than the last. In fact, this one doesn't even get a mark number, as you've probably already noticed. This is the variant you face off against in the Masters of Evil DLC. I would say boss fight, but all he does is randomly shoot rockets until you build a cannon to take him down. What sets this classic Iron Man apart from the rest is his helmet. Instead of having that big ol' helmet piece, his headpiece just has, you know, the Iron Man helmet printing on it. It's pretty neat if you ask me. This variant of Iron Man was seen before in the first LEGO Marvel Super Heroes game, but he was called the Heroic Age Iron Man instead. But regardless, his tiny head doesn't change his abilities at all. But it's neat to see a widely different take on LEGO Iron Man in the Masters of Evil DLC. Here's the one of two Iron Man suits whose mark designation is displayed along with its nickname. As to why they did that, I have no idea, but it makes the suit stand out nonetheless. Another thing that makes the suit stand out is the fact that the suit was actually featured in one of the three Iron Man 3 LEGO sets, in a $10 set. It was a real accessible way to get your hands on an Iron Man minifigure, with cool detailing to boot. Looking at the official render of the character, you can see that the chest is a little buffed up. That's because the suit is especially designed to be able to have a stronger arc reactor blast, which is why it's nicknamed Heartbreaker. The LEGO version of the suit puts a lot more emphasis on the blue in his eyes and arc reactor. Like, with the physical minifigure, the eyes are actually blue, when all other Iron Man minifigures with the same type of helmet have white eyes. The Mark V Iron Man suit is the suit that most people remember from the pretty forgettable Iron Man 2, which is the briefcase suit. Honestly, the Mark V is one of my favorites in terms of suit ups and overall look. Remember with the Mark 42 and how I said the beige color doesn't really complement the red with the color scheme? Well, it's the exact opposite with the Mark V. The silver goes with the red so well and I'm just now realizing that maybe I'm coming off a little bit too excessive, but I'm serious. And the suit up scene for the Mark V is probably my favorite of all of his suit up scenes. I like to think that Whiplash, despite being trapped against the wall by a car, could have gotten out and taken Tony out while he was suiting up for that huge amount of time, but decided to not because he was also in awe of that suit up. Plus, suit in a briefcase? If I got to have one Iron Man suit of my choosing, I would probably without a doubt choose the Mark V because of the ease of access. I don't know if you guys recall the scuba Captain America, the DLC Captain America variant that ran a little goofy because of the flippers and couldn't actually do much with the water despite his equipment. Well here's the scuba Iron Man that came in that very same DLC character pack. These minifigures were based on an Avengers Assemble LEGO set that came out around the time of this game's release, and play pretty much the same as the base game variants. Well, as I said, the Scuba Captain America was placed last of the standard Captain Americas because the flippers made it feel like he went a fraction slower, even if he didn't actually move slower. Scuba Iron Man doesn't have anything that would hinder his movement speed. Instead, it, the, what he has going on makes him look a little bit cooler. The aqua green suit color, you know, the buff like chest piece. Turns out this is an actual mark number in the MCU with Mark 7 in the nickname Hammerhead. Also the energy that comes out of the suit when flying is red orange instead of blue like most other Iron Man suits. It's a little weird that this variant is designated as scuba instead of its mark number like most other Iron Man suit variants in this game but it's probably because the scuba Captain America was also designated as such and they wanted consistency. <laughs> This Space Iron Man is a lot like Scuba Iron Man except for their stark difference in appearance. This variant is taken from the Avenjet Space Mission LEGO set which is also the first LEGO set that had Thanos and since it's a comic accurate Thanos as opposed to the MCU version, it makes it probably one of my favorite versions of him. In LEGO form of course, but aside from Thanos, the Iron Man from that set is what you see here. Also this suit has a mark designation as well even though it's not displayed in the game. This is Mark 39 with the nickname Starboost or Gemini. I don't know why there's two nicknames, but Starboost makes sense. I can't say the same for Gemini though. This suit was apparently at the final battle in Iron Man 3 and was blown up 
with the rest of the suits. Tony should have saved a few suits at least, especially this one. Also, he continued creating suits after Iron Man 3, so did he really prove a point by blowing them all up at the end of the third Iron Man movie? I don't... Here's a variant that I'm surprised is in this game. This is the Superior Iron Man. There was an event in the comics that basically reversed the morality of the Marvel characters via magic. Iron Man somehow shielded himself when the spell was reversed and continued being evil. He met his end when the comic universe and the ultimate universe collided and were both destroyed, then restored again by Reed Richards. When the universes were restored, Tony's morality was reset as well. But what sets the superior Iron Man from the rest in this game is the futuristic design and the white and silver color scheme. As for the game though, he plays the exact same. And you know, since it's the last segment where we see the Iron Men with the exact same abilities, I'll list off the abilities that all these Iron Man suits share in case you've forgotten. The abilities are Flight, Scan, Repair, Shield, Laser, Explosive, and Technology. To recap, all of these suits are really useful in the game, with the ease of transportation with the flight and the versatility of abilities. Really all of the Iron Men I just went over in this stretch of segments are all on equal ground. It really just depends on your preference of design. <laughs> 